That's better. We need no wolf to remind us that death is near, eh, Kovic? Well, let's get on with our work. Sound if I could do with a bear, a big one. Come on, give a hand here. like his eyes staring up at me like that. Why didn't they close them? It's customary. It's almost as if he were alive. Alive? Of course I'm alive! Fender, Fender, help me! You've got to help me! I'm not dead! The woman looks dead enough. Uh, even with her eyes closed, she's a pretty thing. She was always nice to me. Not like the Count. Fender, Fender, can't you see what he's doing to us? He's burying us alive. Please, Fender, you're the only one who can save us. You're our only hope now. I warned him even before we got here. He wouldn't listen to me. Who listens to servants? Fender, Fender, you've got to help me before it's too late. It began only a few weeks ago. Yet now it seems like years. I came to Vienna to see Sir David Latham, the English minister at the court of Emperor Charles VI. So Ronald and Burton. Well, what news, Sir David? Well, our request was granted. I have the invitation that you wanted. Good. From now on, you'll be known as Richard Beckett. However, I must warn you that... Oh, Schrader, Trank, you will wait outside. So, I'm going to hunt on the estate of the famous Count von Bruno, eh? Oh, I must say that you're treating this as somewhat of a lark. You don't seem to realize the danger you're letting yourself in for. If he discovered your true identity. I'm quite aware of the danger, sir. Then why don't you give up this mad adventure? Give it up? You call it a mad adventure to try to find out what happened to my two closest friends, men who would both gladly have risked their necks for me if I were in danger? No, Sir David. I believe that von Bruno killed them out of revenge for what happened in Africa. I want to try and learn the truth or die in the attempt, eh? Look here, my boy. You helped England establish a rich ivory empire in West Africa. England's very grateful. We'd hate to lose you. I'm sorry, Sir David, but I must go through with it. But you haven't an ounce of proof that von Bruno had anything to do with it. No? Then let me remind you that the last letter I had from Sterling and Brown was sent from an inn called the Green Man. Now, now that's in a town right here in the middle of von Bruno's province in the Black Forest. And I never heard from either of them after that. You understand in this country that the Crown has no jurisdiction to give you any help. You'll be entirely on your own. I understand that. Von Bruno is his own law. I can assure you there'll be no justice done unless you can present some proof of his guilt to the Emperor. I'll give him that proof. Sorry, sir. I, I must have dozed off. That's all right, Romley. You might as well get some rest. It's a beastly night. It's quite a change after Africa, sir. Yes. And make sure you forget you've ever even heard of Africa once we get to the castle. Oh, of course, Sir Ronald. What? I mean, Mr. Beckett. See that that doesn't happen again. Frankly, I'm worried, sir. If the Count did... If the Count did do away with your friends, wouldn't you be the next on his list? I dare say I would. That's why I've chosen to strike first. He doesn't even know that Ronald Burton has returned from Africa. I have that advantage. Pardon my saying so, sir. That isn't very much. We ought to be getting close to the border by now. Ah! 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 Yeah. 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 
I'm courier for the Count von Bruno, sir. Good. I'm Richard Beckett. This is my man, Rumley. Here are you! Give a hand with the baggage! You are to transfer to the Count's coach for the rest of the journey. Are we far from the castle? Another day's trip. We stop overnight at the halfway point. The Count has already made arrangements for you. We're ready, Mr. Beckett. You, up here with me. My man rides with me. But, sir, he's a servant. Nevertheless, he's still a man and it's bitter cold out. I'd extend a like invitation to you, but unfortunately, someone has to drive. Where did you say we're spending the night? I didn't say. It's an inn called the Green Man. is excellent, Herr Krantz. Thank you, thank you. It is from the vineyards of the Rhine Valley, the best of the world. <laughs> but, uh, mein Herr, everything was taken care of for the Count. Forget it, man. <laughs> Local crowd? All tenants of the Count from Bruno. They come here for relaxation. We try to please our guests. I'd already heard of your excellent hospitality from two friends of mine who stopped here some time ago. Sterling and Brown. You remember them, of course. No. I never heard of them. And now, if you will excuse me, I will see about your rooms. He's lying. Obviously. Isn't that our driver over there? Yes. Ask him to join us. Certainly, sir. My master's compliments. He requests that you join us for dinner. Well, come along. This be enough for you, Fender? Enough? If I eat all this, I'll be as stuffed as a Christmas goose. Every table taken. I'll have Grant show some of these scum the door. Wait. Isn't that one of Carl's lackeys? Yes, it's Fender, all right. Come, we've got our table. I always knew food like this existed. But I never dreamed I'd ever mouth it. Do you hear? We demand this table. Sit down, Fender. We haven't quite finished. I'll finish for you.
Commander, come here. And you, sir. I can condone poor swordsmanship, but not bad manners. Gentlemen, Mr. Fender will accept your apologies. But, sir, that really isn't necessary. As you wish. In that case, gentlemen, we have no further business. I bid you a very pleasant journey. You're hurt, sir. Let me wrap it for you. Oh, don't bother. It's only a scratch. I insist. Look, sir, your ring. It's very foolish of him. Stupid would be more accurate. Thank you, Romney. Uh, accidents can happen, sir. And even a scratch can be dangerous. Did they scotch you, sir? Now, don't you start criticizing my dueling. Oh, no, sir. I just wanted to tell you that... Well, speak up, man. Those two gentlemen are close friends of the Count von Bruno. Now, that's too bad. It could very well be for you, sir. I've seen strange things happen when the Count was antagonized. Perhaps it would be wise for you to turn back. Turn back? <laughs> I wouldn't think of it. The Count might possibly overlook my winging his friend. But he'd never forgive my turning down his invitation. Very well, sir. We leave for the Black Castle in the morning. Pardon my saying so, sir. But you do have a faculty for getting into things. The question is, can you always get out? <laughs> Will you wait here, sir? I'll announce you. Ah! Oh! The doctor, you're an expert on medical science. Isn't it true that the ancient Romans were pain worshippers? Oh, yes, Herr Kant. They even held endurance contests. It was a mark of distinction to suffer in silence. Ah! No! Oh, no! Do you hear that, Stegen? <laughs> I'm not an ancient Roman. Here, Count. Mr. Beckett is here. Well, bring him in. This should amuse him, too. Oh, you idiot! You call yourself a doctor! You. You call yourself a man. You might at least have warned us, Carl. Warned you of what? That he could outduel both of you? But he's an Englishman. Have you forgotten so soon? Carl's new bride has turned his mind to more tender thoughts, hasn't she, Carl? Count von Bruno? I'm Richard Beckett. I am honored, sir. I want you to know how much I appreciate your invitation, Herr Count. That will be all, Herr Count? Yes, you can go. I understand you have met my friends, Counts uh, Steichen and von Melcher. Yes, briefly. They found they had to leave rather unexpectedly. I had no opportunity to thank you gentlemen for the excellent sport we had. It broke the monotony of a very boring journey. Well, good. That calls for drinks. Doesn't it, Steichen? I understand you've never hunted in the Black Forest. Unfortunately not. But I'm looking forward to something new and exciting. Well, I hope you find what you want here. I'm sure I shall. You've had a tiring journey, Mr. Beckett. Sit down. I, uh... I've planned this hunt for a long time. Have you ever killed a leopard? A leopard? In the Black Forest? Oh, he's a stranger here, too, like yourself. I uh, imported him from Africa just for this occasion. And his trip to the Black Forest can end only with his death. 
Hardly the proper treatment for a visitor, Carl. Do you mean to say that there's an African leopard roaming around loose in these woods? Oh, no, no. He's quite safe at the moment. And uh, quite uh, hungry, no doubt. Of course, you've hunted in Africa, Mr. Beckett. No. As a matter of fact, I haven't. D tell me more about this leopard. It intrigues me. Could I possibly see it? Perhaps. After dinner, when the smell of food is strong on us. Show Mr. Beckett and his man to their rooms, Garg, and they'll want to freshen up. My other guests will be arriving shortly. Anything wrong, man? Oh, don't mind Gargan. He's uh, suffered an experience which makes him rather suspicious of strangers, particularly Englishmen. Gargan, the trunk. I think you made a mistake bringing the Englishman here, Carl. It would have been a bigger mistake to refuse the Emperor's request. That alone would have aroused a suspicion. No, Mr. Beckett will serve his purpose. There are guards and servants everywhere. You will have to be very careful, sir. I didn't like the way Gargan looked at me. Could he have recognized you? It's possible. I don't remember him. But then, I never had any actual contact with von Bruno's followers when my men routed them. May I ask what you intend to do, sir? I wish I knew. There's a dungeon under the castle. I'm going to get down there somehow. If Sterling and Brown are alive, they may be imprisoned there. And if they're... Dead? They could be buried there. I may find something that belonged to them. I wish I could help you, sir, but I'm afraid I wouldn't know what to look for. <laughs> Frankly, neither do I. Are you looking for something? Uh, yes, I, uh, I am. I, I'm, I'm afraid this will sound rather silly, but uh, I was looking for the Count. I seem to have got lost. The Count? Yes, I know, but it's the truth. I was diverted by this cupboard. Ever since I was a small boy, cupboards have fascinated me. I can't resist them. They, you know, the mystery of the unknown, keep out, don't touch, that sort of thing. That could prove a very dangerous compulsion. Yes, I suppose so. But we learn a great deal about people from their possessions, don't we? Do we? You must be the Englishman. I'm Richard Beckett, at your service. I'm the Countess Helga von Bruno. I had no idea the Count had such a beautiful daughter. I happen to be his wife. Oh, forgive me, I'm sorry. Sorry? Well, I... I seem to have got lost again. Then come with me. I'll show you the way to the Count. If that's where you were going. Thank you, Countess.
here. He's hungry for company. Well? Please, Carl. Must I go on? My wife doesn't share my love of sport. But she will eventually. Won't you, my darling? You call it sport to starve a poor beast and release him to be killed? What chance has he? What chance? You'll have your answer when you see him. You do want <laughs> to see him, don't you? Yes. Yes, of course, Carl. Have you ever seen a more magnificent creature? Look at him. Can you imagine what those fangs could do to a man? Or those claws could rip flesh from bone? You still think a battle with him would be one-sided, my dear? <laughs> You'd like to fight him yourself, wouldn't you, Gargan? Can you picture such a struggle? An unarmed man against a king of the jungle. That's quite an idea, isn't it, Beckett? I'm afraid I had too much dinner to appreciate the picture. Perhaps the Countess could show me the way back. Very well. Remember, it was your idea to come down here. You may take Mr. Beckett back, Elga. Perhaps your company will be ample reward for his gallantry. Gargan and I will stay a while. Gargan. <laughs> I want to thank you. Thank me? What for? For letting him think you were afraid. Oh. Well, they didn't fool him. You heard what he said. It was still very thoughtful of you. Tell me. Why did he force you to come along? Because he knows I can't stand brutality. He knows how I feel about all his activities. You see, I wasn't brought up this way. My father was a teacher, a kind, sensitive man. This sort of thing would have horrified him. I see. You're wondering why I married him. I was forced to by marriage contract six months ago. No one here can defy the Count. We go this way. Tell me, where does that lead to? Why, I don't know. But we better not take it. The Count doesn't like snooping down here. No, he doesn't. Well, let's defy him just this once. I think we should go the other way. So do I. But mysterious passages affect me just like cupboards. I can't resist them. Were you going any place in particular? What the devil's the idea? That might have killed us. It might have. I, I lost my way, Carl. Well, of course, my dear, of course. Raise it. Now that you've gotten this far, you might as well satisfy your curiosity completely. Go in, it's open. I assure you I'm not in the least interested. But I insist. No, don't. Your concern is very touching, Elga. You have no qualms, have you? See how dangerous curiosity can be, Beckett. Dangerous? I call it most intriguing. Tell me, what's beyond the room? A cauldron of melted lead? <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you. Beyond that charming room is only a passage out of the castle. I might add, it's the only way out. Your ancestors had some quaint ideas of architecture, Count well, von Bulldog. They did have imagination. <laughs> what tales these walls could tell, eh, Gargan? Now, perhaps you'd better follow me. We could use a 
good night's sleep. You know how we ought to proceed. The trails leading to the castle are clearly marked by number. We travel in pairs. The uh, numbers on your slips indicate the partners and the trail. That will keep us all nicely separated. We wouldn't want an unfortunate accident to mar our pleasure. Have you any idea where the leopard might be, Carl? Oh, absolutely, Rainer. He will be hunting also for the juiciest, most filling meal he can find. <laughs> <laughs> the servants will all remain behind. There will be no gun carriers, or gillies, as you call them, Mr. Beckett. Aren't you joining us, Countess? I'm sorry, I know nothing about weapons. The Countess is more at home with an embroidery needle. Well, that's our signal. Good luck! Don't worry about me, my dear. I promise I'll return safely. That was a fine shot. A lucky one. It takes more than luck to hit a running stag at 75 yards in dense forest. I don't believe in luck. We create our own destinies. You're not superstitious, then. I know you're not, or you wouldn't be hunting with me. You drew number 13. I drew this. It's blank. Exactly. I wanted to hunt with you. Do you hear them? They kill without emotion. I kill with my heart. That's why I never miss my aim. Could you hate a poor animal like this? It isn't hard to see a man's face before your gun sights when aiming at an animal. If you hate strongly enough. Whose face? His features. <laughs> but time will supply the details. Well, I'm ready. So am I. Must be nearby. There's a trail of blood. Let's follow it. Come on, that way. Wait a moment. We'd better dismount. There are two trails leading from here. You take that one. I'll go this way. One of us should get him.
<laughs> Stay there, we'll throw a rope. Who fired that shot? Why, I did, of course. And you call yourself a sportsman. Come now, Beckett. It was all in fun. You were never in any real danger. I was prepared to kill him at any To moment. kill my game? That was my leopard. I had him under perfect control. But, my dear Beckett. And you had the goal to fire. Oh, so that's it. I thought for a minute you were angry because I led you into a trap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I lost my temper, sir. I, I had hoped to finish him off myself. The leopard is yours. Oh, no, I wouldn't hear of it. You were magnificent. It was even your rifle that killed him. <laughs> Fine weapon. No, Beckett, the leopard and the prize are yours. These are beautiful, Von Bruno. I'll always treasure them. Well, let's drink a toast. May these weapons never fail. In a just cause, huh? Oh, excuse me, Beckett. Oh, and uh, enjoy yourself. Make the most of your time here. I'm sorry you're not dancing, my child. Take these up to my room, will you, Rumley? The entire staff is agog with the story of your exploit, sir. You should have seen Fender's face when he heard. Oh, I'm quite a fellow, didn't you know? I heard you were furious when the Count fired. Furious? If he hadn't, you'd have been mine as a master. The Countess is very beautiful. Don't you agree, Dr. Meissen? May I have the honor of this dance? How could any woman resist such flattery? <laughs> See if the moon shines in this part of the world. You've been acting very strangely, Mr. Beckett. Is anything wrong? Wrong? Yes, I'm afraid there is. But looking at you with the moonlight painting your hair with silver and your eyes sparkling. Please, Mr. Beckett, you mustn't. Perhaps we better go back in. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Let's talk of other things. It's an odd ornament to grace so lovely a throat. Where did you get it? I don't know. My husband gave it to me a few months ago. Did he tell you anything about it? Only that it's some sort of charm. Supposed to keep the wearer safe. Well, hmm. <laughs> what's that for? Nothing. Nothing, really. Did he tell you anything else about it? Why are you so interested in this? Do you really want to know? Yes. Because... Because you're wearing it. I think we'd better go in now. <laughs> Elga seems to have found diversion also. Elga? Where? You've been neglecting our other guests, so. I see you haven't. Here's a woman you should know, Beckett. Teresa can outride, outshoot, yes, and outdrink most of the men in this room. She sounds like one of our grenadiers. My peasant wife can do nothing. 
you'll excuse me, I'd like to go to my room. Uh, Teresa won third prize today for shooting the biggest boar. Quite a feat for a woman, don't you think? I don't know. I seem to have got one without even firing a shot. Mr. Beckett, will you please see me to my room? Thank you. Don't go yet. I want to tell you how sorry I am for, for what happened tonight. It wasn't your fault. You've been very kind. Wait. Uh, I shall be leaving here very soon. Oh. I suppose you'd be glad to get back to England. And to forget this dreary place. I should be glad to get home, yes. But I shall never forget you, Elka. Please don't say anymore. There are so many things I want to tell you. I don't want to hear them. Has he ever told you how beautiful you are? Please. Has he ever taken you in his arms? I, I and don't. kissed you? I had to have it. You stole it. While you were kissing me, Listen you... Listen to me, please. When I held you in my arms, I realized how very dear you've become to me. I knew I that... haven't any more pendants, Mr. Beckett. Helga! I should have known you were like all the rest of them. Nothing but evil ever comes to this castle, nothing. Helga, please. What were you looking for in my husband's room? Why did you want my pendant? Why did you come here? I can't tell you. Get out. All right, then I'll tell you. Your husband is a murderer. Some years ago, he controlled a native tribe in Africa. He held power over them by posing as a white god. His aim to gain control of a fabulously rich empire. I was in Africa at the time on an expedition for the crown. Then you've met before? No. Our forces met in a brief battle, and he was wounded by one of my men. His eye? The wound proved to the natives that he was a mortal, not a god. So they rose up against him and drove him out of their country. With me were my two closest friends. Your husband swore that he would get revenge on us. I'm convinced now that he killed them. But what has my pendant to do with that? The natives gave each of us one of these as a token of appreciation. We swore that we would never part with them. Only murder could have placed this in the Count's hands. Then you're in danger too. No, he doesn't know who I am. I'm safe enough. What are you going to do now? I needed this pendant as proof that my friends had been here. I'm going to take it to the Emperor. He will see that justice is done. I'll be leaving in the morning. Then, then I'll never see you again. I'll be back. I promise you. I'll be back.
a pretty miss. She'll pretend that she's unwilling, modest. <laughs> what are you gaping at? We don't need a doctor, do we, Tressa? Does, does anybody here need a doctor? <laughs> away, away. Pour yourself back in the bottle. E excuse me, sir, but I come from Count Steichen. He wishes to see you. Steichen? Good old Steichen. <laughs> I wonder how Steichen would look in the bottle. <laughs> he, he says he must speak to you alone. It is most urgent. And where is he? In the trophy room. Steichen? Mm. Carl, get him out. We'll talk alone. Mason. Well? Hmm. I shouldn't have had another drink. Why, you drunken fool. What have you learned? Enough, Carl. Enough. He told her, he told her. He told her what? Uh, what did he say? Beckett. Beckett is. Get Meissen. Meissen. Meissen, come back here. wrong with him? He's dead. Dead. Are you sure? Why, just a minute ago... Hey, count. It, it must have been his heart. Comes the ox. I am sorry. Terribly sorry. If, if you would like some wine, I can... Don't bother. Get out. He was watching. He learned something. Yes. And now you'll never know what it was. I think I will. Yes, I'm quite sure I will. Carl. I didn't mean to startle you, my dear. What do you want? A few words with my wife. That isn't too much to ask, is it? But it's late, Carl, and I'm tired. I dare say you have reason to be. Deception is a strenuous pastime. I don't know what you're talking about. Your little interlude with our English guest was carefully reported to me by Steichen. Oh, no. Oh, yes, my dear. I make it a point to guard my possessions very carefully. You are one of them. It's really too bad things had to turn out this way. I was beginning to like Mr. Beckett. Then you know. Know what? That you love him? Is that what Steichen told you? Actually, I'm more. No. No, that's all. Yes, it's true that I love him, and there's nothing you can do to change it. Am I so repulsive to you, Elk? I despise you. I could never let you touch me. You force me into this marriage like you force everything. I could never love you. Like you love the Englishman? Yes! <laughs> Dragon! I'm a generous man in every respect but one, Elga. The first Countess von Bruno found that out too late. The Countess is in your care. Murderer. You murderer. You seem to be enjoying a healthy appetite this morning. Why not? Uh, what do you think of Teresa? You're already making plans. Death is inevitable. Why not accept it? Could anyone have been closer to me than my first wife? Yet 
When she died. Uh, pass the sausage. Well, everything has been taken care of. You sent the body. I followed your instructions to the letter. Good. Sit down. Speaking of death, Doctor, surely there must be some explanation for a man of Steichen's constitution dying so suddenly. There is. If you were a medical man and examined the body, I'm sure you would have found the explanation. <laughs> medical man. <laughs> Dressed for traveling, Mr. Beckett? Go get up, Count. I'm afraid I have to leave. There are some pressing business matters in London that need my attention. Oh, I see. I thought you were going to be with us much longer, Mr. Beckett. Didn't you, Carl? Oh, I don't know. I can understand how things suddenly come up to change one's plans. Isn't that so? Exactly. I'm disappointed that you're not staying, but uh, perhaps some other time. You... you mean to say you're going to let him run off this way? Well, I can't force my guests to enjoy my hospitality, can I, Mr. Beckett? I... Uh, I want to thank you for everything. Oh, don't mention it. Uh, call Fender. Oh, about the uh, leopard pelt. Shall I send it to you? You keep it, with my compliments. I would have liked to say goodbye to the Countess, but... Well, naturally. Uh, I'll be happy to convey your message to her. One of the last things she said to me last night was that she admired you greatly. She's a very charming woman. You're a lucky man. Oh, Fender, you'll drive Mr. Beckett to the border. Help with his things. Well, I... Uh... Hope my future hunts are as successful as this one was. Goodbye. Goodbye. You let him go. Shh. You're a fool, Ernst. Should I have insisted that he stay around to ask embarrassing questions? I would say his departure was most opportune. Now, what do you say, Doctor? Oh, yes, Herr Count, most opportune. Under the circumstances. I hadn't thought of that. But I can't see why you should want to leave her in such a hurry. He left because he's a gentleman with a gentleman's sense of honor. <laughs> he probably didn't want to get himself involved. Now, if it were you... <laughs> <laughs> Come, help me with my accounts. The tenants pay their taxes tomorrow. This fair gave me the creeps, sir. Uh, certainly glad you finished your business there. Finished? I'm not so sure that I have. I know. You're thinking of that poor girl. Yes. I'm thinking of her. Again, sir? Yes, Romley, you may. Dr. Meissen. Where is Fender? He went to bed. Why? Good. I must talk to you. Alone. Well, now, Doctor, what's all the mystery about? I was afraid you might have gone already. I came as quickly as I could. Can't I get you something to drink? Oh. You must return to the castle at once. Oh? They miss me so soon? Oh, believe me, this is no joking matter. The 
Countess life is in great danger. I'm sorry to hear that. However, the Count seems quite capable of protecting her. Protecting her? He's the one who will kill her just as he killed his first wife. Oh, so he killed his first wife. That's too bad. But uh, I'm afraid I'm on my way home to you Eden. You think I'm trying to trick you? That's the first sensible thing you've said. Now, if you'll excuse me. I don't know what to do. I'd hope that... Look, Doctor. If what you're telling me is the truth, why do you come to me? Because you're the only one who could help. You were with her last night. I heard you. You'll have to do better than that, Myson. Would murder convince you? Whose? Mine? You know Count Steichen died last night? Yes, I heard about it. His heart. His heart, eh? I poisoned him to keep him from telling what he knew about you. He knew nothing about me. You're wrong. He knew everything about you. Sir Ronald Burton. Now will you trust me? Believe me, the Countess needs your help. What can I do? I don't know. It may be too late already, but you must find some way to get her away. I need an excuse for returning. Romley, can you get into my room at the castle? Yes. I think I can. Right, Romley, fetch me those new dueling pistols and give them to the doctor. You'll leave right away. Go and wake up Fender. Tell him we're returning to the castle. Well, what, sir? We're going back. Any objections? Oh, no, sir. Very good, sir. Well, I wouldn't go quite as far as that, Romley. Rob of France, 100 Gulden. Well, any complaints? Oh, no, Herr Count. It's very just. Well, Kranz, how's your business? Oh, I manage. 200 Gulden. I think you will find that correct. Uh, just a minute. I passed your English guest on the highway uh, yesterday. So? I didn't think I would see him again. When he was at the inn, he asked me some questions about two friends of his. Who? Sterling and Brown. Get out. Get out, all of you. Come back tomorrow. So his departure was not so opportune. You let him go, you've only yourself oh, I, to blame. Oh, I Call it intuition and call it what you will. I disliked him from the start. I'd give anything to come face to face with that scoundrel. He'd never leave this castle alive. Come here. Look. What does it mean? Why did he come back? Obviously to join his friends. Sterling and Brown. Well, Mr. Beckett, what a pleasant surprise. You changed your mind about leaving. Not exactly, Count. I'm terribly sorry to break in on you this way, but uh, as a matter of fact, I discovered I'd left my dueling pistols behind. I prized your gift very highly. Why, I would have sent them had you written. Oh, yes, I know, but uh, one can never tell these days when they may come in handy. So... Believe me, Mr. Beckett, I don't want you to get the impression that I didn't want you to come back. It's a real pleasure to see you. Isn't it, Ernst? Why, just before you returned, uh, Ernst was saying... Uh, what did you say, Ernst? It wasn't important. <laughs> Nevertheless, now that you're here, I'm going to insist that you stay. I really should. Oh, no apologies are necessary. I understand perfectly. Come on, let's go up and find your pistols.
Are you sure you left them here? Positive. Where else could they be? Fender. Yes, sir, Colt? It was your duty to put this room in order. Didn't you see Mr. Beckett's dueling pistols? No, Herr Count. Where are they? Thief, where are they? I didn't take them, I swear. I didn't see them. Bruno, here they are. It was very careless of me. I, I should have remembered. I'm sorry, Fender. You, you must have overlooked them. So he could steal them later. Get out. I'm sorry you were inconvenienced, Beckett. I know what it means to lose something of value. Well, there are more pleasant things to talk about. Not that way, Beckett. I'm sure you'll want to see the Countess now that you've returned. What's the matter, Fender? You're acting very strangely. If your master is in trouble, then I must go to him. Where is he? The Count has taken him to the dungeon. I'm afraid there's nothing you can do. Oh, there must be something. Can you take me there? Come with me. Didn't I understand you to say we were going to see the Countess? Of course, Beck. You seem very anxious, almost like a young lover on the way to his sweetheart. Would it be more appropriate to say like a lamb being led to the slaughter? You have a point there. Look here, Von Bruno, let's stop playing games. I assure you I'm not in a playful mood. Neither am I. Where's Elga? Elga. How intimate you've become with my wife. Where is she? What have you done with her? Elga! Elga! Let him go. What's he done to you? You shouldn't have come back. Nothing would have kept me away. Oh. What a touching scene, Sir Ronald. But it was inevitable, wasn't it? You had so many reasons for returning. Oh, you'll have to be a lot more clever than that. What do you intend doing with us? I think you know the answer. I can expect the worst from you. Then you won't be disappointed. No, neither will I. You know, Burton, I must begrudgingly give you a certain amount of credit. You carried off your deception in a masterly fashion. Fortunately, there's such a thing as justice. What do you know of justice? For five years, I lived in a nightmare of hate. Reliving the agony I suffered because of this. I found only one relief for that agony. The hope that someday, somehow, I'd find you. Sterling and Brown came first. I overlooked the possibility that you might search for them. Again, I underestimated you. And I... <laughs> I never dreamed you'd come of your own free will. <laughs> I suppose I must be grateful to my charming wife for that. Do you think you'll get away with this? The Emperor knows I'm here. He also knows the dangers of hunting. I suggest you make the most of your brief reunion.
You're all right. There isn't much time, sir. I'm staying. Are you mad? Come on. It's your only chance. I can hold them for a while with this. Rumley, I'm ordering you to come. Then for the first time, I must disobey you. I'm sorry, sir. He said this was the only way out. Strangely enough, I do. But it's that horrible room. We'll have to chance it. Well, be carefully and step where I step. Close to the wall. outside. So you did find the way up. Look, Von Bruno, you can't get away with this. Why don't you listen to reason? Sir Ronald talks of reason, Gag. What do you say? Um. <laughs> it's unfortunate we can't understand him. His tongue was ripped out by the natives you sent upon us. You won't forget that, will you, God? keeping you alive so the Count can torture you? Oh, you've had to suffer a great deal on my account. Don't say that. There must be a way out of here. I think perhaps that I can help you. Yes, there is a way, but it's fraught with great danger. We're not in a position to haggle. You know you can never get out of here alive. Von Bruno made that quite clear. Well, the alternative is equally clear. To get out of here, you must be dead or at least have the appearance of being dead. Well, that's impossible. Suppose there were a drug that would retard your heart action, slow up your pulse rate and your breathing until they were imperceptible, until to all outward appearances you were dead. You have such a drug? Yes. Well, supposing we take this drug, what happens? I know the Count. He'll order an immediate burial. Well, that's fine. We're dead, we're buried. Then what? 
The action of the drug will last for about ten hours. By sundown, the funeral will be over. Then, if all goes well, tonight I'll come to the mausoleum and release you. And if it doesn't? That's the danger I spoke of. You know what that would mean? We'd be buried alive. I know what you're thinking. But I'd rather face that. Anything with even the slightest chance of success than what he has in store for us. All right, Doctor. We're ready. Drink this and go with God. Wait. to know that whatever happens... I don't say it. I, I know. I think my life began with you. And if it must, I want it to end with you. Overpowered me. Took the poison from my back, and before I could stop it, they both dragged me. I'm trying to. Bring her in, I'm For your stupidity, you can join me. No, 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 don't kill me. They are not dead. Not dead? What do you mean? It is true. It was not poison, but a drug they took. They're alive. In ten hours, they will recover. This is good. Did you hear that, Ernst? This is far better than anything I could have planned. Do they, do they know what's going on? I don't know. I, I think so. So, the unhappy lovers, Romeo and Juliet, can vengeance be pursued further than death? Oh, oh, I am indebted to you, Doctor. You're a genius. Prepare them for burial. <laughs> you may invite a few intimate friends. Naturally, the services will be in ten hours. <laughs> on Melcher, under the circumstances, restrain your feelings. I'm sorry. For the dead. <laughs> <laughs> I beg you, do not think too badly of me. I tried my best to help you. Forgive me for not having the courage of youth. Forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> Forgiven, Mason.
an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Sir Ronald. Seal the coffins. Fender, please. Can't you see what he's doing to us? He's burying us alive. I wonder why he ever came to the Black Castle in the first place. Fender, help me. You've got to help me. I'm not dead. I know one thing. I wish it were her account I was sealing in here instead of... Corbridge. What's that? Do you hear it? It's... It's from inside. I'm getting out of here. How could it be? He's... Come on, we're imagining things. Let's get it over with. Guests have all left, Herr Count. Good, you may go. Oh, patience, Von Belcher. Have patience. Spend their last moments alone. Come on, let's start on the other. There it is again. I'm going to see. What are you doing? Why aren't the coffin sealed? Put them in the coffin. He kept his promise. 
We are free. What are you going to do after we've gone? There will be other employment. Could I persuade you to come with us? It would be a great honor, sir, if you'd let me. Catch your things. I have them, sir. Right here. <laughs> Move over, Max. I'm driving. <laughs>